Okay. 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 Let's begin. Give it up. This is uh, thanks for coming. This is to ask uh, the Prime Minister to why he has not instituted defamation proceedings against uh, two international media which have openly called him a thief. In the first, for the for the first time in 61 years of the nation's history, the Prime Minister of the country has been publicly called a thief. Not once, but twice within two days by two international media organizations on completely different issues. One was the International Weekly Magazine, The Economist, which on 8th of May, 8th of March, carried an article entitled Stop Thief, Malaysia's PM is about to steal an election. The report alleged that Najib feared that most voters would not vote BN to power again if given a choice and is taking their choice away by means of gerrymandering and malapportionment, among other tactics. The article said, in most countries, a government that allowed US dollars or 4.5 billion USD to go missing from a state development agency would struggle to win re-election. If some USD 681 million had appeared in the Prime Minister's personal account around the same time, which he Breezily explained away as a gift from an unnamed admirer, the task would be all the harder. An apparent cover up involving the dismissal of officials investigating or merely complaining about the scandal might be the last straw for voters. But in Malaysian elections, alas, voters do not count for much. The article continued Faced with the risk of losing power, the government is rigging the system even more brazenly. Parliament will soon vote on new constituency moudris. The proposed map almost guaranteed Najib another term, despite his appalling record. He noted that the practice as male apportionment is so far unfair that it is illegal in most countries, including Malaysia, where the constitution says the electoral districts must be approximately equal in size. The next day, on March 9th, the American television host Rachel Meadow of MSNBC news program also called Najib a thief in the Rachel Meadow show. Meadow made detailed mention of the one MDB scandal from the time of the Arab donation matter to the latest developments, including Indonesian FBI seizure of Jolo's billion ringgit luxury superyok economy in Bali last week and the Wall Street Journal report on its review of a cache of emails which revealed that an aide and donor of US President Donald Trump had asked for 75 USD million from 1MDB mastermind Joe Lowe to get the US DOJ to drop its 1MDB investigations. The following is a transcript from the Rachel Meadow show last Friday and this is what Americans all, 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 all over the world saw. <coughs> this is what she said. This New York that you own, that is the people of America, is a $250 million yacht. It is called the Economy. It has now been seized by the FBI, by US federal agents, and is being handed over to the US government. So congratulations, US taxpayers. Hope you like your new boat. I should also tell you that this week, you also just became the proud owner of 60 million worth of proceeds that were earned by the film, Wolf of Wall Street. The producers of the movie have now surrendered $60 million of what that, that film made to the US government. So you own those proceeds now too. You apparently are also about to become the owner of some of the proceeds of the movie Daddy's Home, starring Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg. And you are also about to become the owner of some of the proceeds from the movie Dumb and Number 2, which stars a car that looks like a dog. In the case of those two movies, though, unlike Wolf of, Wall, Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street, where we know it is $60 million that you are getting, I don't know exactly how much of the proceeds you are going to get from Dumb and Number 2 and the Dead, and the, and the dead One, but you are about to get some of it as a US taxpayer. 
And the reason you are now the owner of all this new stuff you didn't own before is because of this guy. Of course, then you had the video of uh, our Prime Minister going to the White House and meeting Donald Trump. Uh, not the one on the left that's Trump. Trump, the other guy who is the Prime Minister of Malaysia. If you're the Prime Minister of a country and hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars suddenly show up in your personal bank account, you better have a really good explanation for that, right? I mean, Prime Minister's jobs do tend to come with a nice salary, but not hundreds of millions of dollars overnight kind of salary. A couple of years ago, though, somebody put almost $700 million into the bank account of the Prime Minister of Malaysia. And he really had a no good explanation for it. For months, he just said it was nobody's business. It was his money. He said these allegations, these institutions, that there was anything inappropriate about the sudden infusion of $700 million into his private bank account, he said this was just his personal opponents trying to undermine him. There was nothing to see there, here. Then... His own Attorney General and his Deputy Prime Minister started saying, actually, you know, maybe the Prime Minister should answer questions about this mysterious $700 million. The Prime Minister reacted to that by firing both of them. He fired his Deputy Prime Minister and he fired his Attorney General. The Prime Minister then appointed a new Attorney General to look at the circumstances of that money turning up in his bank account. And that new hand-picked Attorney General looked into it and declared that really it was all fine. Nobody had done anything wrong. And that's when they decided what their public explanation would be for where the money came from. The explanation was that that money, that $700 million, it was a present. It was a no-strings-attached gift for the Prime Minister from the Saudi royal family. The line was that there was a Saudi prince who decided that he liked the Prime Minister of Malaysia and no occasion, really. He just decided that the Prime Minister could probably do with $700 million, so he gave it to him, free for nothing. When that's your good sounding exp explanation, when that's your everything is fine, nothing to see here, excuse, that a Saudi prince drop it off, we don't know why. If that's a good sounding explanation, you know the bad sounding explanation must be really, 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 the three really bad. Well, surely, a few months later, the US DOJ, filed a 250-page complaint alleging that the $700 million cash that turned up mysteriously in the personal bank account of the Malaysian Prime Minister that was just a fraction of the proceeds of a gigantic heist. A giant act of thievery, this is there, a giant act of thievery, a corruption scheme in which the Prime Minister and his family and his associates stole billions of do dollars from the Malaysian government. $4.5 billion if they stole in cash from the Malaysian government. That is calling a thief. And some of it, they just stack up in bank accounts, but mostly they laundered it all over the world, including the United States, which is why the US Justice Department brought the case, even though the money was stolen from the people of Malaysia. And the, and the list of stuff that they spent the stolen money on is a ridiculous list of stuff. The Prime Minister's family and friends, they bought penthouses in New York City, they bought mansions in Beverly Hills, they bought yorks, yes, yorks, very white style and otherwise, they bought Picasso paintings, they did a lot of gambling. The Prime Minister's wife mysteriously ended up with a lot of ridiculous jewellery. The Prime Minister's sap son used a bunch of money to finance some Hollywood movies, including The Wolf of Wall Street, Daddy's Home, Dumb and Number 2, all through a company called Red Granite Pictures. If you actually watch the trailers for any of those Hollywood movies, you'll see a splash page at the beginning of all those thrillers for red granite pictures. US Justice Department said there was that was the money laundering vehicle for some of these gazillions of dollars that were stolen from the Malaysian government by the Prime Minister, his family and their associates. And yes, that's a sort of bonkers list of things to spend money on, particularly if you're trying to stay low-key and get away with this kind of theft, right? Ostentatious much. But in a way, if you think about it, you sort of have to spend the money on something. It's hard to explain hundreds of billions of dollars, let alone billions of dollars just sitting in bank accounts. Maybe it's better to convert it into real world saleable assets, converted even into assets that might make a profit. If diamond number two is anywhere near as good as the original, it might be a good investment. Well, now the United States has started the process of seizing the assets that are believed to have been bought by the criminals who carry out the scheme. The stuff that was stolen with Malaysian government money, US federal official 
the FBI started last summer going after the real estate. They made Leonardo DiCaprio's hand over the Picasso that he was given as a gift by the good people who turned up with barrels full of cash to finance the world, the wolf of Wall Street. And the Justice Department has continued to pursue its investigations into this huge heist. This massive theft of billions of dollars in government funds, which ended up resulting in the purchase of all these things. So a few things here. Number one, congratulations on your New York. It is lovely, even to the point where it is attractive. Two, yes, it was strange when President Trump hosted the Malaysian Prime Minister at the White House just a few months ago in September in the middle of this big investigation. White House never mentioned the federal agents who were pursuing the Malaysian Prime Minister as a multi-billion dollar thief. Multi-billion dollar thief in this gigantic scheme. There was actually worry in advance of the Malaysian Prime Minister visiting Trump that if on this trip to the White House, the Prime Minister's wife wore some specific jewelry she is known to possess, federal agents might be put in the awkward position of having to take that jewelry off her, like maybe when she was leaving the White House. White House grounds or maybe at the hotel. Naturally, the Malaysian Prime Minister and his entourage, including his wife, all stayed at our presence hotel in Washington where they were for that visit, which means the government funds, there's US government funds that were fully belong to the people of Malaysia have now gone into the pockets of the Malaysian Prime Minister himself, but also into the pockets of our president. Nice, no wonder they get along so well. So the ongoing Justice Department investigation and the seizure of all these luxury items bought with the stolen funds that makes the trial, make Mr. White House visit a little weird. Now it is getting weirder because the Wall Street Journal has obtained documents, emails that appear to show the top Republican fundraiser close to President Donald Trump was in negotiation to earn tens of millions of dollars if Justice Department dropped the investigation into a graft scandal involving a Malaysian state investment fund. I should tell you, the specific businessmen who are talking about here, who they were trying to set up some sort of contract win with, he is the guy who is technically the owner of the New York, the economy. This York that the FBI agents just seized in this case. FBI agents have found the York, but the, this guy himself, who is technically the owner, who is allegedly part of the of this big theft scheme with the Prime Minister, that guy has gone missing. And they are now looking for him right now. But according to the Wall Street Journal, within the last year, these emails that the Journal obtained show that a, a Trump fundraiser was pursuing a draft business agreement with that guy. The guy who is now a fugitive, right? The guy who owns the yacht and cannot be found. Elliot Brody and his wife were pursuing a deal in which he and his wife would get paid a cool $75 million if they were able to succeed in getting the Justice Department to drop the Malaysian case. This is weird, right? This massive corruption case, massive heist, multi-billion dollar scheme and Trump is hosting the Prime Minister at the centre of it in the middle of this big case by the Justice Department. And the main business guy who also seems to have benefited from it, at least he got him a $250 million yacht. He is involved with one of Trump's fundraisers who are asking for a $75 million payment to get the US Justice Department to drop this case against him. It is a strange story, right? Who knows where this one ends? And that's all over the MSNBC. Will Najib soon? Will the Malaysian Prime Minister clear his own name and reputation, if not for his own sake, at least for the sake of, the, of Malaysia and 30 million Malaysians? It is not only the US, Australian, British, European and other international media which have been reporting about the one MDB scandal. Even ASEAN media, with Indonesia leading current affairs ma magazine Tempo, highlighting the one MDB scandal and the cover-up by the Malaysian government, despite ongoing investigations by various foreign authorities. In its latest edition, the weekly publication Tempo featured the one MDB scandal on its front page with a caricature of businessman Joe Lowe on board the economy team. And in several articles within, including one headlined, Smooth Inside, Stalled Out. Smooth Outside, Stalled Inside. They noted that investigations by Malaysian authorities conducted over the past three years have not resulted in any charges brought, brought against individuals linked to the state investment fund. Nine other countries investigating this, 
This corruption case has found facts that contradicted the Malaysian government claims. The FBI has established links between business person Jolo and 1MDB and even concluded that the economy was bought using money raised from 1MDB bonds, the tempo said. The question Malaysians must ask is whether Malaysia has become a double global kleptocracy. Firstly, because of the 1MDB scandal and secondly, as charged by the economists because of the theft of the impending 14 GE. Najib cannot continue to behave as if he has eyes they see not, ears that hear not, and mouth that speaks not. He has no option but to clear his own name and that of the nation. That's one item. Second item is, uh, I've, got, I've got two uh, emails from uh, Swiss members of parliament, which uh, uh, copies are attached. One is by Carlos, who, who moved the motion in the Swiss parliament. It, it should be debated later today. And the other one is by the Peter Huck, who is a Social Democratic Party, who is a member of parliament. Uh, in response to my email to them, calling on the Swiss members of parliament to support the return of some 400 million ringgit, which the Swiss uh, government authorities have seized from uh, Swiss banks and because they are related to one entity money laundering. Uh, so these are the two emails and uh, they are attached. Uh, Tony?